Welcome back to the channel. I've got a really interesting video for you today. But first, I want to thank you for all the engagement. I've been looking at the analytics and I can tell from the added comments and likes and everything else you guys are doing on YouTube, it's really improving. I can see that when I look over time, I'm getting more views, engagement, watch times up, subscribers are up. So thank you again. Let's start the video. So many of you are familiar with the PubChem database. This is a great reference for pretty much all things chemistry, medchem, biochem. Um, there are some analytical chemistry resources even embedded in this database as well. And this is funded by NIH and the National Center for Biotechnology Information. And so many times, even before my Python journey, when I would need to look up some chemical information, I would get on PubChem, look through here, and usually copy and paste this information, which is fine when you have one or two, but that effort doesn't scale well. But for those who are unfamiliar with PubChem, I will walk through a little bit of the information that you have access to. So this is free to access, just search some information. And usually some chemical name followed by PubChem will get you here. And in this case, I'm just showing information for D-glucose. At the top of the page, you have some PubChem CID. So this is a chemical identifier. You have some structural information, some sort of graphical renderings in 2D or 3D. So chemical safety links, the molecular formula C6H1206, many, many synonyms for glucose, as you can see here, everything from DGLC to some of the numerical synonyms as well. So we have a CAS number. Sometimes you have other numbers associated with this and a list that's quite extensive. We get to you to move further down. We have chemical and physical properties. These are things like the molecular weight, log P, the exact mass, the minus atomic mass. But of course we have even more information such as the complexity. And now we start moving in some cases more to the med chem space where sometimes this information might give you some insight into how it might interact in the body. Um, this is also where um, a lot of the biochemistry comes into play as well. And while glucose might not be the most interesting, it's relevant for a lot of scenarios in analytical chemistry to biochemistry, medchem. And so I wanted to at least give this example here. But what I mentioned earlier is that this idea of manually looking through this database does not scale well. And that's where this library, PubChemPy, comes in. This is a Python-based library that allows you to interact with the PubChem database. And so this is a great tool. I will walk through some examples in the documentation, and then I will also do a little bit of programming just to kind of whet your appetite and allow you to then continue. In the next video, I'll also show how we can take some of these outputs and plug them into other Python libraries to add even more to the experience. So here you can kind of get an idea of what we can do. Uh, we have a couple of methods that we have, such as get compounds, and we can then begin to take information from this database and begin interacting with it even more. And so when you begin reading about a new library, it's good to understand the goals of the library to see if it accomplishes what you're looking for. And so we can see it allows for chemical searches by name, substructure similarity, chemical standardization. So this is great. This is exactly what we want in this video. But you can see we also have some attributes like molecular formula, molecular weight, log P, that we can get based on these chemical IDs. We have this from CID method. And I, I mentioned before that the CID is this chemical ID number. And that's going to be a key way to interact with the PubChem database. But as well, there are many other features included. And so I will just focus a little bit on this and will allow you to explore more yourself. And I may do some videos where I, I put some of these things together into a larger project. But first, I want to focus on introducing you to this library. There's some other cool things you can build these things out, create your own data tables from it. So there is some integration with pandas and then some advanced ways to interact with the PubChem database. However, there's other tools you can build beyond what's available in PubChem for looking through this database, such as using regular expressions and other tools that you might be familiar with if you are comfortable in Python. So now I want to show how we can interact with this library using Python. If you haven't already, you can pip install PubChem Pi, either in your Jupyter Notebook or in the terminal in whatever environment you're setting up. And it's good to use the alias that's used in the documentation. So they recommended PCP, which makes it easier to adopt the code examples that they have, and just to sort of establish some common language around how you interact with this library, the same way we install pandas at, or import pandas as PD or NumPy as NP, that just makes it easier to interact with these libraries. So I've got a couple ways that we might look for information. A lot of instrument vendors 
have a way of producing data. And sometimes that data is in the form of a cast number or an Enki key, or you get the name itself. And so let's say I want to take their glucose example and work with it a little bit. That's as simple as running this cell. So if you look at the type of compound, you see that it's a list. And this is important because if you want to try to take advantage of some of the other aspects of it, such as compound that get molecular weights, you notice that none of the attributes come up, you start getting these list functions. And so it's important to understand the data type you're working with. So if I want to actually access this compound information, I need to subset this list. And now I have that and I can track the type change. And now you see that we have this PubChem compound type. And so now we have access to the tools. And so now if we take this and tab complete, you see that we have a lot of methods and instances. So these are things that we don't have to memorize all of the tools. We can actually just search through this. And if we want to return, let's say a molecular formula of glucose, we get that. If we want to do something like the molecular weight, we have that. Let's say we want the exact mass. So this is something, again, that's pretty important if you are building out a library and we want to start adding protons to understand what glucose might look like in a mass spec experiment. But there's other ways to interact with this. So I'll save some of it for the next video. But one of the really cool options we have is to not just search by name. So I was working on some instrument where instead of the names, which could be difficult, we it would actually give you a cast number. And so let's, instead of name, a, a compound name, we pass in the cast number. And you see that if we look at this compound and let's just we look at this compound, we get the same compound ID. So that's what this is returning for us. And we want to get this first item. So now that we have the compound type and what's really cool is you can actually produce this list of synonyms. And so recall when we were in the pumpkin database, we had the option to see all of these synonyms. And so if you have a project where you have multiple lists and each list has a different name for glucose or some other organic compound, you can actually use that to compare the lists. And so let's say I, I have someone who uses glucose and someone else who uses maritose, and that can obviously cause quite a bit of confusion. It wouldn't necessarily matter because we have a way to just pass other synonyms. So of course I would write this out a little more elegantly, but for the sake of the example, we see that we produce the same synonyms as we do when we looked up glucose. And in fact, you will see that maritose is somewhere in this list. And so there are Python ways to search this list, see if it's included and produce the same number. And one of the other ways we can interact with this is to use regular expressions to start extracting out maybe some of the cast numbers or environmental ID numbers and use that as a tool. And so another process might be take these synonyms and convert them all to cast numbers. I've done that for various work projects, a really cool way to compare multiple lists together. And so in any case, this is just one way to work with this library. There are ways where this information can be passed to another Python chemistry library for data visualization and other ways to understand these chemicals. In the case, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Surprise!